Creatures that are more or less defenseless and have no natural weapons seek safety in hiding. Such a one is the echidna, a half prehistoric animal of Australia. Its claws are for tearing down ant hills and its long nose for poking after ants. This nose would get dreadfully in the way if the echidna tried to bite. It can't defend itself and does its best not to attract notice. Raccoons are also without natural weapons, but they adopt camouflage to hide from enemies. The dark mask, like a burglar's across their faces, makes them look like forked branches when they hide among the trees, or like shadow among the rocks. Giraffes, in spite of their long necks and strange markings, blend so well with the splashes of sun and shadow among the stumpy trees and long grass of their home in Kenya that they easily escape notice unless you are on the lookout for them. Other animals that are not defenseless dress like their surroundings so that they can creep unobserved upon their prey. The tiger is so striped that he glides almost unseen among the spears of grass in the Indian jungle. And the lion, fawn in colour, tones with the African undergrowth as he stalks his favourite dinner of tasty zebra meat. But the zebras pay him back in his own coin. Though fleet of foot, they rely largely on the camouflage effect of their stripes to protect them against enemies as they roam the African plains. The young of animals like zebras and horses that depend for safety on speed rather than on hiding are able to run practically from birth. Lambs can skip along all right, though they are a little shaky on their legs. Baby mountain goats start very early to consider the leaps that will make for safety among the rocks, though at first they don't quite like the look of them. Other animals provide hiding places for their young. The little wallaby can always take refuge in mother's pouch. He can take a share of mother's vegetarian dinner, or wash his face, and so defy the world until his legs are strong enough for him to leap away to safety among the tufts of grass. If young animals are born in a permanent lair, helplessness keeps them at home until they can take care of themselves. On the same principle, birds that are hatched in well-hidden nests are at first blind and unfledged so that they cannot stray. This magpie comes from a nest hidden among the branches of an old thorn tree. Young chiffchaffs are hatched out into a home well protected by brambles. In spite of the fact that the nest is hidden, the mother is always on the lookout for danger and the noise of the cine camera upsets her quite a lot. The woodpecker taps the tree trunk to find a convenient hole in which to hide her family. If a part of the bark is taken away, you can see how safely the eggs are hidden. Birds nesting in dark places lay light-coloured eggs so that they can see them in the dusk and avoid treading on them. Young woodpeckers stay inside the tree and are fed from outside until they are fledged and have a stiff enough tail of feathers, like their parents, to support them on the tree trunk. The tree creeper also nests in a hollow tree and the little birds do not come out 
until they can justify the name of creeper. The Manx Shearwater hides her nest for safety in an old rabbit burrow. Here, a one light egg hatches out into young Master Shearwater, who is very like his mother. He stays safely underground until fully fledged. But if a bird's nest is practically unhidden, like this of the water hen, then the young birds are much more active when they are hatched. They seek safety by hiding in the surrounding reeds, and they can not only run, but climb as well. Young pheasants in their nest on the ground have striped down to blend with the grass. And young grouse are dressed on the same camouflage system. Their nest on the moors is very exposed, so they have to run almost as soon as they are hatched. Notice the curious wavy lines on their down. These lines turn wonderfully with the surroundings of the nest, looking exactly like the dark and light heather stalks among which the baby birds scatter and there soon find safety in hiding. The full-grown grouse is also dependent on camouflage for avoiding enemies. But the champion foliage imitator is the chameleon. If only he wouldn't put out his tongue to mop up flies, he wouldn't be noticed at all. Copying leaves is a very favourite fancy dress among caterpillars who are most anxious to avoid the attention of hungry birds and stronger insects. Perhaps the most elaborate costume is worn by the privet hawkmoth caterpillar whose suit is trimmed with white bands to suggest privet flowers. The back half of the lobster moth caterpillar pretends to be a withered leaf, while the front half gives an excellent imitation of a ferocious spider. Copying fierce insects is a favorite trick of defenseless ones such as the bee hawk moth, who can neither bite nor sting, and therefore dresses in stripes to imitate the honey bee, whose vicious sting is generally feared and with reason. They are so much alike that they can only be told apart at a distance because the bee alights to feed, while the moth hovers above the flower and draws up the honey while on the wing. A looper caterpillar, even when quarreling about a right of way, contrives to look like a piece of stick. But in repose, his imitation of an ivy twig is really masterly. Here are a group of loopers sheltering on a branch of ivy. Their imitation is perhaps one of the most wonderful examples that nature offers of a helpless creature seeking safety in hiding. <laughs> 